Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Zhang Shaowen. I come from China Mobile Social Software Technology. I'm glad to have the opportunity of making this presentation about uh, object worm feature in self readers Gateway. Uh, here is what I'll share today. First, I'll introduce what is worm and why we need worm. And then I'll introduce the S3's worm feature, which is also called S3 object lock. And the last is the work of worm itself. So let's begin. Uh, what is worm? Worm is short for write once read many. It describes a data storage device in which information once written cannot be modified. The simple explanation is that it's immutable storage. You can write data to the storage device or media preciously one time. After that, no one can change the data in any way. A simple version of worm storage is a CDR disk. We can write data to the blank disk and then it's stuck that way forever. We can damage or destroy the disk to deny someone access to it, but we can't change the data that's already stored on CDs. What one storage does allow is multiple readings of the data. Assuming the disk isn't damaged, there is no limit to how often we can read the data. Uh, there are two types of worm. The first one is a physical worm. It uses storage media, which is physically can be written only once uh, and uh, prevents the user from accidentally or intentionally altering or erasing the data. Optical storage media, such as CD and DVD, are a good example, offering fast access and long term storage capability. Physical worm has historically been used or achieving data that requires a long-term retention period. Logical worm is a software emulated virtual equivalent of the right ones with many capability available on physical media. Logical worm can prevent rewriting even if with non-worm storage media such as disk drivers. Now we have known what is worm, but why we need it? Uh, with the advancement of science and uh, technology and so social development, information has exploded, and the issue of security access and application of data has gradually received attention. For example, court cases, medical cases, financial securities, and so on, these important data are specified in accordance with the law. So they can only be read and not overwritten during the time period. Therefore, such data needs to be temple proof. The one feature provides a right once multiple read technology. It is a commonly used method to for data security access and achieving in the storage industry. It is designed to prevent data from being tampered with and to record and achieve data. So uh, the S3 uses object lock to implement uh, the worm feature. Uh, it can help users and prevent objects from being deleted or overwritten for a fixed amount of time or independently. Users can use S3 object lock to meet regularity requirements that require worm storage or add an extra layer of protection against uh, object changes and deletion. The object lock can be set on objects or buckets, and it can have a retention period, or just a lock with no time limit. S3 object lock has been sensed by enhanced associate for use in environments that are subject to SEC 74, CFTC, and FINI regulations. Now, before we can lock any object, we have to configure a bucket to use S3 object lock. To do this, we must specify when we create the bucket that we want to enable object lock. After we have configured a bucket for object lock, 
you can lock objects in that bucket using retention period, legal hertz, or birth. We can only enable object lock for new buckets. There is no S3 API if we want to turn on object lock for an existing bucket. When we create a bucket with object lock enabled, it will automatically enable versioning for the bucket. Uh, and uh, after we enable object lock, we can't disable it and uh, or suspend the versioning for the bucket anymore. Now, <coughs> object lock provides two types of protection, retention and legal hold. The first is the retention. It, uh, it consists of a period, target, and mode. Retention period protects an object version for a fixed amount of time. When we set it on bucket, we can use days or years, but we can't use birth. Uh, and uh, when we place a retention period on an object version, uh, S3 stores the timestamp in the object version's metadata to indicate when the retention period expires. Before the period expires, uh, we, can, we can't delete or overwrite the object. And when the period expires, the protection for the object is over. After that, the object version can be overwritten or deleted. The retention period can be extended after it is set. Any user, as long as they have the appropriate permissions, can extend the retention period, but no one can shorten the period. Because the timestamp is set when the object is uploaded, so you can't change the timestamp when you change the retention period on bucket. Uh, however, you can change the timestamp if you set the retention on specified object. Uh, there are uh, uh, two types of retention mode. See the retention modes apply different uh, levels of protection to object. We can apply either retention mode to any object version that's protected by object lock. Uh, the first one is govern governance. In governance mode, users can't overwrite or delete an object version or alter its uh, lock settings unless they have special share permissions. With government's mode, we protect objects against being deleted by most users, but we can still grant some users permissions to alter the retention settings or delete the object if necessary. We can also use government's mode to test the retention period settings before creating a company's mode retention period. To override or remove government's mode retention settings, a user must have the by and pass government's mode permissions. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> and explicitly include the header in your request, which I want to override the government's mode. In complements mode, uh, Protected object version can be overwritten or deleted by any user, including the root user in the AWS account. When object is locked in a complement mode, its retention mode can't be changed, and its retention period can't be shortened. Complement mode ensures that uh, 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 object uh, version can't be overwritten or deleted for the duration of the retention period. In addition to the retention period, the user can also set a legal hold on the specified object to protect the data. Uh, legal hold has no retention period. Once set, it remains in effect until it's removed. The um, put object legal hold permission is required when the user sets or removes the legal hertz. Legal hold is independent with the retention period. Uh, after the container's object lock is enabled, the user can set or remove legal hertz regardless of whether the object is protected by the retention period. For an object, 
if it has a birth retention period and a legal hertz, the user can't delete or overwrite the object until the retention period expires and the legal hertz are removed. Um, based on the object lock of S3, we applied the object lock feature in Ceph Redux Gateway. Uh, there are six new APIs added to Ceph. Put and get bucket object lock are used to set or get the default retention period on the bucket. Uh, we can set with days or years, but not birth. And the put and get object retention are used to set or get the retention date on the specified object. Uh, and the last uh, put and get object hertz are used to set and get legal hertz on the specified object. Apart from these uh, six new APIs, we also modify some other APIs like uh, creating bucket get object metadata to make the object lock feature work. Uh, uh, the right is the examples of object lock setup uh, and configurations. The first is the sample of object lock set on bucket. It has the status mode and the this or yes. Uh, and the second is the object retention data sample. On the object, it only has the date and the mode. And the last is the legal hold configuration. It uh, only has the legal hold status. So <coughs> how can we indicate the object lock enabled on a bucket? In the code, we use the flags in RTW bucket info structure to judge whether the bucket has enabled the object lock. It is set during the bucket creation. When creating bucket with a specified parameter of object lock, the flag will be set and the object lock and the versioning will both be enabled. To store the retention configurations, we also added the object lock configuration to the RGW bucket info structure, so we can access it uh, easily and quickly. Like uh, Hacker S3, the retention configuration only have the default retention rule at present. <coughs> if we set object lock configuration on the bucket, the object uploaded to the bucket will have the retention period automatically. Besides, we can also set a retain until date on the specified object version. No matter which way we choose, object will finally have an attribute which indicates the date of the protection expires. So we use the structure RGW object retention to store the information and it's kept as an object attribute uh, in the user RGW dot object retention. Uh, and uh, <coughs> the legal hertz information is the same. It is also stored as an object attribute like the retention does. With the work above now, we can support uh, the one feature in self Redux gateway and uh, other S3 features like uh, LabCircle can work together with object lock to help users manage their data more easily. Uh, <coughs> there are some work left to be done. Uh, the first is test cases. Uh, we have to add some test cases to S3 tests. And uh, the second is the policy. Uh, the policy supporting object lock also needs to be improved. Uh, this so below is the link of the object lock work. Oh, that's all. Thanks. Any questions?